Hello friends. I have put together a sequence uh, to share with you all based on uh, exercises, principles from Robert Schleip's Fascial Fitness. This is a great, uh, easy to read book all about the connective tissue. And the four principles we're gonna work with are stretch, spring, feel, and revive. And I'll talk a little bit about what each of those mean as we go. So uh, for what we're gonna do together now, all you need is a small ball, a tennis ball, or I have this blue fascia ball from the Franklin Method, uh, one with the spikes or a little knobbly uh, texture would be great too. So grab that ball if you don't already have one. And then we're gonna start with rolling out our feet. So this would be uh, under the revive principle. So notice how I'm kind of turning my foot in and out, rolling right down the center of the arch. And right now I'm going fairly quickly. So that's one of the things we can work with is different timing. You can also press, hold, and go a little slower so you get more of an expanding or kind of melting quality. But the connective tissue really likes pressure. Maybe just focus on the ball of the foot Give your foot a little rock side to side, or just the heel. And then let's do, just stand for a moment. Notice the difference from one foot to the other, how one foot feels a little more expansive and grounded. Now let's try the other side. So again, uh, revive. It's for uh, bringing more fluid supply, more hydration to the connective tissue. So if you're someone with plantar fasciitis, heel pain, stiffness in your uh, foot, ankle, lower leg, this is a great way to capture your brain's attention to get your brain talking to your feet a little bit more clearly, and then also stimulate more fluid exchange, more fluid blood supply to all those tissues in the foot. Oh yeah, so maybe a little extra on the ball of the foot and just turn it side to side. So this may be more of a stretch component. So I'm stretching the inner and outer edge of the ankle for bringing more um, tensile strength to the tendons. A little bit massage around the heel. And then you can also do uh, some more compression right in the center of the arch. So you can just stand and give a little extra pressure can also give yourself a balance challenge and try lifting the other foot off the ground. So let's do that with both feet too. Part of the deal with getting the fascia happy is to give it the amount of pressure that feels good to your body right now. So if it feels oh really sharp and tender, then I'd go a little gentler, a little less compression but ideally you should be able to give a pretty good steady pressure. All right, and then again, compare the sensation from one foot to the other. In fact, let's walk around a little bit and just notice how your feet are making contact with the floor. Maybe a little bit more spread out. Hopefully toes are a little more relaxed. And then we can just move the ball out of the way. And now we're gonna keep focusing on our feet ankle, lower leg, and we're gonna go with a little rocking side to side. So this would be more in the stretch principle. I'm also feeling, so the feeling principle is for uh, bringing body awareness, uh, more clarity of perception of what's happening within your body. And then we can go front to back. So kind of rocking and lifting the heels and toes up and down. It's also a little bit of a balance challenge. So if you need to, put your hands on the wall or on the kitchen counter, on the back of a chair. And then we can combine those movements. We rock side, shift the weight to the front, to the other side, and back down. So I'm kind of circling, tracing the edges of my feet. Let's keep going in that same direction you chose. I'm also pushing down through my 
big toe, second and third toe. So we're gonna get a little strengthening for the big toe muscle, the flexor hallucis longus. Let's go the other way about five times. So side, front, side, and back. And then we're getting more mobility, more range of motion in the foot and ankle. Circling around. One more time like that. And you can vary the timing, go a little faster, or a little slower, and then just shake it out a little bit. Now let's work a bit more with the spring principle. So this sequence I have for you is uh, heavier on emphasizing spring, which is for increasing the elastic capacity of the connective tissue and in particular your tendons. So let's do a little bouncing up and down. Oh. And you just make this as vigorous as feels good to your body. Some of us, this might not feel so great in our knees. So you adjust as you need to, but Try to let your arms really hang loose. Let your whole body kind of wiggle jiggle. You can shake out your arms a little bit. Imagine cushion between the, the joints of the knees, the foot and ankle, cushioning in the hips. Nice verticality through your spine, your head floating up. In fact, let's add a little warm up for our arms too. Circle your arms up with an inhale and then exhale your arms back down. And you just keep that nice, vigorous bouncing going, building that elastic potential in the Achilles tendon. Oh, and all the tendons around the foot and ankle. But that translates all the way up through the chain. One more. And now let's let the bounce go and just keep our arms swinging. And for this, let's go side to side. I'm really letting momentum take the weight of my arms. So for springiness, we want to get a little momentum going, a little less control. In fact, let's change the direction. Now we can swing them sidewards. And I like to play with crossing one arm and over the other and kind of switching which arm is on top each time. And then we can swing one arm forward, one arm back. And maybe to add in a little bit of the lower body, you can float the opposite leg up. So turn it into a little bouncy march side to side, or you can just stay with the same side a few times. Try the other side. And about five to 10 of each thing. So this is meant to be something that you can do. Let's alternate again any time throughout the day. I want you to get creative about how you move around the house in your daily life. Now let's swing our arms in front of our bodies. And then this one we can add the opposite leg swinging out to the side. So you could do just the upper body or add in the lower body. Maybe we stay on one side and repeat. So it becomes a little dynamic balance challenge. We're getting stretch, swing. Let's go to the other side. Also feel your body as you move. Notice if you start to tense or arch your lower back or tense your neck and shoulders, can you soften there? Let's try alternating again side to side. And now let's just get creative. And just swing your arms and let your whole body kind of follow along for the ride. Let your breath flow. Mm. And just improvising for a moment with swing and spring, elastic, fluid movement. A lot of us get really stuck in very basic pattern of just walking kind of stiffly around the house. Uh, so now let's do specifically for the fascia in the front and back of the hip, a little more leg swing. So you're just gonna swing your leg forward and back and let your knee bend when you swing it back. If this is a balance challenge for you, just put your hand on the back of a chair 
kitchen counter, the wall. And think of the swing coming from the pubic bone in the front. Keep a little softness in the standing knee. You're not locking the standing knees. Let's do the other side. So I get up on top of that leg, find support if you need it, and then let that leg swing. Keep a little softness in the standing knee so I'm feeling my body. What do I need to adjust? To do as little work as possible, only as much as necessary. I can let my arms kind of help out. A little counterbalance with the arms. It should feel like a nice dynamic stretch in the front of the hip and the back of the leg. And then let that rest. And let's do a bit more swinging, springing. So this one in the fascial fitness uh, book, they call it the flying sword. So you're going to grab a, a five pound weight is nice. Uh, a, you could do this with a water bottle if you don't have a weight. Or you could even just use your tennis ball or an apple, something light that you can grasp with both hands. But it's nice to have something to hold on to so that you get that connection of your hands into your shoulder. We're going to go feet in a fairly wide stance, toes turned out in 45. And then either interlace your fingers around the ball or stack your hands if you got a water bottle or a weight. And first, let's just do some little circles out in front of our body. So just a little more to bring our awareness to our shoulders. So feeling, let's reverse. If your neck starts to tense or your shoulders start to lift, can you keep it more soft? You can keep soft elbows too. And then rest a second, wiggle around. And now we're gonna bend our knees, hinge forward, and then swing your arms up, hips forward. And this is another one for that tensile strength, for that elastic recoil that we want in the tendons and the connective tissue. You wanna allow a little bit of momentum. And then let's switch which hand is on top if you've got them stacked. If your back is quite delicate, maybe you just make it a little smaller. But if it's feeling good, allow that nice big range. So front and back body expanding. And notice how I'm bending at the hip, knee, and ankle every time, not keeping any of my joints locked. One more. All right, wiggle around a little. And then let's keep that a little bit wider, slightly turned out, not the most turned out stance. And this one, let's see, this one's called the swinging bamboo in the fascial fitness book. So here we go with some swinging bamboo. We're gonna start with both knees a little bit soft. Your ball, your weight, your water bottle in one hand, and then you're gonna swing your arm and bend the knee you're swinging towards and then come back to center. And you can do that a few times, a little more control just to get a feel for it, but my feet are staying the same. I'm not pivoting the foot. And then you can start to add a little more yeah. momentum. Remember, let that knee bend the other leg stays fairly straight. And then we can play with different angles. We might swing it down low, up high, somewhere in the middle. I'm turning and looking toward that hand. And then we can also add some little end range pulse and see how I'm pulsing my knee as well as my arm at different heights, different angles. And you just get curious about what feels good. And then let's come back to center. In fact, let's do one other one of the uh, flying sword here. So, and add pulse. Two, three, four, five at the top. I'm drawing my belly in and up, feeling the support from the abdominals, wide across the back. 
one more time. Four, and then keep the weight in the other hand. Flying bamboo. I think that's what it was. No, the swinging bamboo. So we can start with that kind of high diagonal. I'm bending the knee, I'm twisting toward, I'm looking back toward that hand, and then I can change the angle. Get a little more momentum going. The other arm can be active, reaching in opposition also. And then I can add a little bounce. Remember to bounce the knee as well as the arm. And the movement is coming from my shoulder, not my hand and my arm. You really want to think of your hand connecting all the way down into your sacrum through your latissimus, the big lat muscles. And you're just being curious about all different angles, swing and pulse. And remember, you can do this without weight, just something light to hold in your hand that helps stimulate the strength through the whole arm, through that whole chain. Oh, and notice the opposite foot. When I pulse, I can ground through the opposite foot. All right, let that go. And then if you already have your ball, keep it. If you put it down, grab your ball again, or any little thing you can hold on to. And then a little more for spring and elasticity. We're just gonna throw without actually throwing. <laughs> and again, this movement comes from the shoulder and you can throw in different angles. Yeah. And this is kind of a fun one that you could do any time of the day, wherever you are in the house. Let's do the other arm. So give it a shake out and then little twist and throw. Get creative about the angle. Keep a good hold on the object so it doesn't fly out of your hand. And notice how the power comes from the shoulder, but it's also all the way through your whole body. So let your legs, your hips, your spine respond. So it can be more of a throw, it can be more of a punch, but some kind of sharp movements. You can alternate, even just throwing and catching something for agility. There's no reason that you couldn't be doing that just walking around the house during the day. All right, so that's throwing, punching, sharp movements for springiness, getting that, what is that, that increasing the elastic capacity of the fascial tissue. Uh, so now we're gonna just work with different walking patterns. So I can walk in a grapevine. Let's do that a few times. One foot in front, one foot in back. I can just do a side step, step together. Let's do that a few times together. I can walk backwards Make sure you're in a place where you're confident you're not going to run into anything. Just walking in all different patterns and directions is one of the pitfalls of modern life is that we get stuck in these very small ranges of motion, small patterns. So maybe imagine that you've got paint on your feet and you're painting different patterns on the floor, zigzags, spirals. And then for a little more spring, so this would be actually considered a bit of stretch, improving the mechanical properties of the fascia and the feet, ankles. And then we can add spring with some little hops. So if hopping, jumping is available to you, try it out. Hop in all different directions. Maybe try hopping on one foot and balancing. So it's great if you can stand and balance in stillness. That's a useful tool to have, but it's a little more functional to be able to just stop 
yourself. Maybe even do a little side to side. Get your heart rate up to one foot in front, one foot in back. It's a kind of a cross country skiing style. So get creative about maybe slalom. You can pretend you're skiing. And then you can also get creative about how you're interacting with things around the house. Like in the fascial fitness, they, they call it light switch kung fu. Use your foot to turn the light off and on. Use your foot maybe to open and close the door. Use your head <laughs> to open and your shoulder to close. So it might seem a little unusual or silly, but it's a good way to get the tissues working in more varied ways. Because that's one of the things is we don't want our brain to get bored. If, if Imagine if all your ears ever heard was the same high-pitched ringing tone on and on and on, then you'd start to go a little bit deaf to it. You would want to block it out. So that's what tends to happen is the brain blocks out sensation when we're not giving it enough variety. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll just get more creative with your movement throughout the house. Remember to include feeling your body as you move, self-massage, you can use a foam roller or a ball, stretch, um, so more static stretching is great, more dynamic stretching that includes more bounce um, and shifts, weight shifts, is great for the spring function as well. All right, my friends, thanks.